Thanks for listening to Entre Nido, the show where we help you live the Nido life. By listening to Entre Nido, you'll learn how to develop multiple streams of income. You'll hear amazing stories and takeaways from professionals in their field. And you'll learn more about yourself and how you're wired. The average person spends 90,000 hours at work in their lifetime. Student loan debt is at an all-time high, and 41% of all divorce is based on finances. If you feel like you're surviving, but you wouldn't exactly say you're thriving, then you've come to the right place. Whatever stage of life you're in, Entre Nido is here to help you be a better entrepreneur. Break out of that rat race and start living your Nido life today. And now introducing your Nido host, Matt Neff. Welcome back to Entre Nido. I am your host, Matt Neff. And on today's show, we have the brilliant Chuck Belsamo. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us today. On the show today, we have Chuck Balsamo and we talk on the topic of clarity, calendars, and cancellations. Chuck is a great friend and an amazing encourager. I met him about four years ago and he is brilliant. He has a gifting for taking complex systems and thoughts and making them easy to understand and attainable. You can spend 60 seconds with Chuck and feel ready for anything because of his Jedi-like encouragement and passion. No, you don't want to sell many death sticks. You want to go home and think your life over. On today's show, we talk about how you can be more focused and get more done through today's topic. I also want to mention a great book I finished by the late Stephen R. Covey called Primary Greatness. If you haven't read it yet, please do yourself a favor and pick up a copy. His material on the clock versus the compass is amazing and will change your life. And as a thank you for listening to today's show, you can get this book for free by clicking the free book tab on our website at entrenido.com. That's E-N-T-R-E-N-E-A-T-O dot com. And as always, thank you to our friends at Audible for making this possible. Lastly, a quick reminder, we'd love for you to consider supporting the show through Patreon. For more information, check out our Patreon page. And don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe on iTunes to help the show move forward. Thank you again for listening. And now on to today's interview with Chuck Belsamo. Welcome back to Entrenito. My guest today is Chuck Balsamo, Mr. Balsamo. So good to see and hear you today. How are you? Matt Neff, you've become such a great friend since that first interview we've done a long time ago. And uh, so it's good to be back and talk to your audience. It's been a long time. Yeah, it has been. I, I apologize. I wish it was sooner, but this has been this has been great. And we're both evolving and learning and growing. And so I'm excited about what we're going to talk about today. Before we get too far into it, I would love for you to promote away anything you'd like to share. Uh, no big promotions. I mean, just one thing, you know, uh, I am, I've, I've just started masterminds after doing coaching for such a long time, creating really massive success with clients, just started masterminding. And if there's anybody in your audience uh, that wants to jump in, it's called the Extraordinary Circle. And, uh, you know, I'm really focused on curating those, those circles and putting the right people in the right group and creating like a, uh, a mastermind super brain, uh, eight people, weekly zoom calls. And, uh, and so that's the big offer. You know, I don't want to offer something that's paid without offering something that's free. I still have a workbook on my website, chuckbalsamo.com that people are still using. I mean, it's just a very simple PDF workbook. It's called here to there mapping your next steps. And it's really about, you know, getting clarity, which is kind of like the topic we're going to be covering today. Um, it's, uh, it'll take you through all the way from discovery to dreaming, to planning, to achieving. And, uh, if you're, if you kind of like log jammed right now, it'll, it'll really help you get some clarity for the next season of your life. So that's free. All you got to do is just, uh, enter your information at the bottom of my homepage. I love to interact with people on social networks. So, um, find me there at Chuck Balsamo everywhere. ChuckBellSummer.com. Perfect. Well, uh, we've, we got into it a little bit before with your backstory, but uh, I would just love to hear more for our listeners that maybe are hearing you for the first time, kind of your backstory, how you get to you know the, the real estate and the coaching and the mastermind and the public speaking and all the traveling you've done, where that started, how you got to where you are today. Man, you know, I just, I do feel, Matt, as you know, we, we both share the same faith and mm-hmm. I do, I've, I've spoken with, uh, I've sp- been speaking on some uh, secular platforms here lately and and, uh, you know, people ask me, my God, you know, how did you, how did you train to be a speaker like this? How did you get these doors open? How are you speaking in stadiums? You know? And, uh, I do, I do feel fortunate. I think, I think the church creates an amazing platform for people to grow their gifts. 
uh, whether it's volunteering, contributing, and this isn't a plug necessarily for churches or for Christianity, uh, but I just, I know for me, I, I'm starting to understand the value of being able to serve in my community, in my church, and what that's meant to me over the years. I, I learned how to be a servant, and uh, I've served on every single level uh, to the lowest, lowest level. I remember when I was throwing trash cans, uh, cleaning up after church parties, and I remember one day the sludge from the trash can pouring over me like a tidal wave and thinking this is the lowest thing I could possibly, the lowest way I could bend my knee for other people. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, my journey's been fun. I've just been following the path of yes, just going forward, 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 upward, 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 uh, developing skills. If I, if I reach a point where I feel nervous, then I just develop that skill and uh, push through, get the knowledge I need, get the education I need. And, uh, you know, uh, I think... Um, I think for me, it's uh, the, in a general sense, I know that my gift to mankind is encouragement. So I just, uh, I constantly looking for opportunities to clap for other people, to cheer, to help somebody have eureka, aha, that moment. Uh, and as we talked last time, Matt, I love to be that guy on the cliff that's uh, clapping at everyone who wants to cliff jump, saying, you can do it, one, two, three, jump, one, two, three, jump, come on, you got this, you got this, go. And so... Uh, Somehow I've monetized that. Somehow I've built uh, a business, a ministry around that whole idea. So um, I'm having fun. That's so great. And I think about, I was talking to a guest earlier today, another interview, and was talking about you. And I said, yeah, like I said, my friend Chuck, he's like a Jedi master at encouragement. And so <laughs> I, I noticed that in myself. I noticed that God gave me that gifting to encourage. I love to encourage people. And so it's, it's based on a... Thank you. Thank you. It's uh, based out of Romans 12, chapter 12. And uh, it's it's right up there, you know, and, and it always seems like encouragement compared to like prophecy or whatever it may be is like, it, it seems like it could be a little bit lower level, but it's really not. It's a lateral gifting yeah. that God gives us, which is so cool. So I'm like, okay, I need to get even better. I want to be like my uh, my friend Chuck. So but I, I love it. Uh, I love your I love your attitude and your approach to life. The way you see things is amazing. We had the opportunity to hang out in L.A. Uh, a few months ago. It's such a blast, and I was so amazed because it was what got me there was just the power of asking questions for the most part, and people that I know connecting. And it all started with Entrenito and my, our good friend, mutual friend Mark Keen, introducing us and things like that. And then it was like game over. But I just was so amazed standing there look, overlooking L.A from the hotel and just seeing like, wow, this little zoom H five made such an incredible, uh, you know, open door, but even more than that was the relationships and, and life that moves at the speed of relationships. So it's, it was surreal. It was a great moment. And we're going on three and a half years now with Entrenito and, you know, I'm, I'm so glad you're my friend and, you know, we get to work together. So with, with having said all that today, to keep things moving, I know we are short on time. We're going to be talking about clarity, calendars, and cancellations, and that's the yeah. uh, topic of discussion today. So I would love to hear more about it because those are three things that I've definitely had uh, in my life. You know, Matt, whenever you do a podcast interview, you, you, you try to come with whatever's in your mind right now. And then if you're doing multiple interviews over a period of a week or two weeks, you try to spin everything in every direction, and you don't want to be redundant. And uh, I just think for me, when you said, hey, what do you want to talk about? You know, I know it's three C words. I'm not necessarily trying to be clever here. Ah, another one. Uh, but <laughs> that's four. <laughs> I do want to talk about clarity, calendars, and cancellations because, as a coach and as a friend to lots of people, I find that um, so many people are uncertain about what they really want in life, and they're somewhat certain. And somewhat certain is not enough. You can't give up in your pursuit of, for clarity. And the last time we spoke, Matt, I was really struggling with clarity in my own life. I mean, I, I probably went through a two-year period where I just couldn't figure out what direction I wanted to go with my life. I was very deeply, I was deeply committed to the things I was committed to, but there were lots of things I was doing that, I was, that weren't making me happy. I know it's not all about happiness. I know that Sigmund Freud says the end of the end purpose or goal of man or uh, is, uh, what did he say, pleasure. And then Viktor Frankl says, nope, I disagree. It's meaning. And uh, it's, 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 you know, I, I believe that it is meaning. It's about meaning. And 
So I'm not just saying I want to follow the path of like what makes me feel best, but I do believe that we were designed by the maker to love what we were designed to do, right? So I need to understand myself. I need to discover. I need to drill myself with questions and until I really figure it out. And it gets complicated, you know? You get another skill, you get another layer, you can now do this with your life also. And, and when you're younger, maybe it's not even as hard, but when you get older, it gets very difficult to figure out, what am I gonna do with my life? And a lot of people think, you know, maybe I, I can't do what I love to do, right? I think I would stop there and I would say to you, you know, I've watched your journey. It seems like you are moving in the direction of the thing that you love more than anything else right now. Am I right? Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Takes time though. Takes years. And you first get the idea and you go, well, so I remember for me, the breakthrough came when I wasn't, when I was searching for clarity and I said, you know, what are my skills? So I would write down all my skills. I'd write down all my desires. I'd write down what other, I'd ask other people, what do you think about me? Like, what's my biggest strength? And then when I finally, like, I let it be whatever it is instead of something I felt like I could build a brand off of. Hmm. And it was just simply, I'm the ultimate encourager. And then my, then my question was, well, what do I do with that? You know? Yeah. Right. Like, especially what do I do with that? You know, one of the things I do with my life is I'm a pastor. And, you know, mm -hmm. inside the church world, sometimes you could get really condemned hard if, if, if you're too light, you know, if you're too, uh, mm -hmm. you know, if, if, if you're, if you're all grace and <laughs> Hey, you can do it. You're great. You know, and people will right. say, well, you're just a, you're just a motivational speaker. And, and I kind <laughs> of am, I, I, right. and I'm okay with that. I'm accepting the fact that I don't believe I want to spend my life as an apologist. I thank God for poly apologists, mm -hmm. but um, I, it, it's not a cop out. I know that I feel like I'm my best when I'm, when I'm cheering for someone. And that skill for me is gold. I want to be the mm. best in the world at, you know, if I'm in front of somebody, I want to try to point out their strengths and there's no flattery involved at all. I'm not trying to get something from the person. I'm right. being genuine. And, uh, if you've got nice glasses like you do, uh, <laughs> if, you. if, uh, you got a really super cool shirt on like you do, um, if you're a good podcaster, whatever it is, I, I mm -hmm. notice things immediately. Hey, nice shoes, man. Wow, good posture. Um, mm -hmm. Good handshake. Wow, what a great smile you have. You're such a humble person. Wow, you're confident. Whatever it is, I, I want to shine a light on that. And just people need that so bad today. Yeah, I feel there's such a, there's constantly a within and without on the inside and the outside, there's always a debit. There's always something that's taking from you. If it's internal, it's, I'm not good enough. I'm not ready. I'm a fraud, whatever it may be. There's that negative negativity. And then on the outside is people saying maybe things rule, rudely to you. Maybe it's bullying. Maybe it is just more subconscious where it's you're on your phone, checking the highlight reel and the newsfeed of everybody's highlight reel of how great their life is, you know? And it's just like that can take your you know, your encouragement away. And I think that for me, when I figured that out and I said, oh, well, okay, well, I'm just going to start there. Encourager. How can I change the world with that gift? Well, I could be a podcaster. I could do podcast interviews. I could speak. Well, fortunately, I'm a speaker. Uh, does this work for being a pastor? Yeah, it works really well for being a pastor. Does this work for being a coach? Yeah, works very good. Can I coach 100 millionaires with that gift? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I find that it's all relative. And now that I have, you know, clients on that level, it's scary when your, your level of clientele goes up and up and up and up. And every time you hit another level, you go, I, well, sir, thank you for being interested, but I, I'm not qualified to coach you, right? Mm -hmm. And you, you, you just realize that it doesn't matter how high ups with success somebody goes, the problems they're facing are all relative. They're all the same on mm. each next level. Um, people are either overworked, they can't push back, they're suffocating, they're stuck in chaos, they can't get clarity, they can't figure out what they should be doing, um, and, or they're, they're lacking the confidence to go bigger. And I just did a talk at Growth Now Live, and mm -hmm. I was talking about overcoming fear to be your best self. And I, I'll give you an example, you know, 
I have never danced in front of an audience in my life, right? <laughs> so I posted a video. I said, I said uh, I'm coming out to Growth Now Live, you know, like this. And then, and then Justin Shank says, if you don't, you know, I forget, you know, I'm going to hit the trap door or something. So I was right. like, you know what? I'm terrified that they're going to expect me to come out dancing. I decided... <laughs> Um, and I had posted that Post Malone video of the old guy dancing to the Wow song. So uh -huh. I decided to learn that song. And I went out, gave that talk. I came out dancing to that mm. Wow song. They did the mm. whole thing in front of the crowd. Didn't do too bad, right? <laughs> yeah. But I faced my biggest fear because I realized that hiding behind that fear was, was reducing me down. And I wanted to break out of that box. I want to hit the next level in in expressing my true self. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I had to overcome that fear. And, and I just think that for me, knowing that I'm an encourager, it permits me to not allow other people's expectations of me steer me in their direction. I want to mm -hmm. be really true to this person that I was designed to be. Yeah. And I want to be the very best at it. That's so good. So what are some things that you have seen as far as, so we, I feel like we've jumped into clarity. What are some of the things you would say as far as takeaways for, for like the calendar? Like what's the power of the calendar? How do you utilize it? What, what does it mean to you? Yeah. And the reason I said clarity, clarity calendars and, and cancellations, there's a nice progression there that hmm. once you figure out what it is you want to be committed to, I think we should make commitments over short periods of time. Um, you know, if you want to, if you want to make a shift into something new in life, like for instance, I have a, uh, one of my clients is doing a startup and when, when he first hired me and I, I don't do a lot of startups anymore, but when he first hired me, he, he was working a $40,000 a year job somewhere around there as a manager and he had a specific skill. And we sat down and said, well, is there an audience out there for this? Could you teach that skill to somebody else? And this sounds so cliche, but I'll tell you, he's launching his program in about three weeks now. It's been recorded. It's being edited. He's built mm, the whole cool. thing on Kajabi. We've worked out the marketing niche. Uh, this guy has a $99 product. He's going to make several hundred thousand dollars off of this. I'm positive. Mm, but wow. he had to figure out what it was that he wanted to do with his life, right? If he wakes up each day unhappy, but he doesn't know how he's going to navigate. He's just going to get the same over and over and over and over and over. So, you know, um, and you do the thing about jumping from the nine to five. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, it is all about clarity and, and, and it is, is, is all about knowing like, what is it that I want to do with this next season of my life? Mm -hmm. I decided that I wanted to do masterminds instead of coaching. And then I thought to myself, well, what if I'm not a good mastermind facilitator, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and I had all these, I had all these beliefs about it. Like, no, 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 one-on-one -on -one coaching is the very best way to grow a business. And then I realized, whoa, if I put eight people curated and I build a super brain, what could happen in that circle, mm. in the right circle, with eight people all lending their strengths, right? And then I yeah. get to facilitate that so that everyone can produce a quantum leap together, you know? So then I just decided, once I knew that was what I was going to do with my life, I have immersed myself over the last many months at learning everything I can learn about masterminding, all the apps. I, I found out that I couldn't find a plug and play scenario. There were some that claimed to be, so I've created one. Now I'm even saying, well, my God, maybe I, maybe I put this whole thing together in a program and I say to anyone who wants to do masterminds or coaching, here it is, checklist one, checklist two, checklist three. I've obsessed over it, right? But once I had clarity, then I could start the process of navigating my life in that direction. And so the reason I talk about calendar is because that's when you have to create realistic timelines and you have to figure out, you know, does my life have enough space in it for me to move in this new direction? A lot of people want to move in a, in a new direction, but their calendar is not allowing it. And wow. so yeah. you say to them, what kind of progress did you make last week? Um, none. Well, what kind of progress are you making this week? None. And... People sit on dreams for years because they never get control of their calendar, right? And I'll explain about that in a minute, but have you found that to be true in yourself? In yourself? Yeah, no, that's really good because I was listening to, 
uh, I was talking with Mike Michalowicz a few weeks ago, and he was talking about a new wor- a book he's working on. He was talking about the hierarchy of needs, like in just life. And if that isn't met, so if you, for example, I'm probably butchering it, I apologize, but if you need food and shelter and uh, you're working on getting food first, but you're having trouble, having trouble getting food, then you're going to just focus on that and then you're not going to worry about shelter. And then if love is higher up on the, on the rung, for, I don't have time for love. I need to worry about and focus on getting shelter and food right now. So he was talking about that and it feels just like that in the sense of this is really brilliant. I love, I love this context because you're not going to ever focus on your calendar if you don't have clarity first. And it's like this, it's this hierarchy. It's like get clarity, then your calendar and then your cancellations. And I don't want to speak ahead too far, but I, I, I see that like a lot of people don't ever get out of the clear, the clarity shift in a sense of first gear to go to second gear where the can't, you know, where the calendar's at. I think we really... I think a lot of people really don't think they can have the life they want to have. And you know that saying, we overestimate what we can do in a year, but we underestimate what we can do in five years. In five years, you can create a whole new life for yourself. In five years, you could be a millionaire. You could be a multimillionaire. You could live on the Pacific coast on a cliff in five years with the right plan. It's just you have to know what am I going to commit my life to, and you have to like... You have to laser focus your commitment onto that thing. Now, when you're navigating, that's a challenge, right? Because Ty Lopez talks about the steak. I love it. I'll never forget it. I use it all the time. The steak in the side dishes. He coined the phrase a long time ago. He said, you always have to know what your steak is, and, you're, and, and, and your life is like a plate, and then you have the side dishes. The steak gets 70% of your attention, your time, energy, right? Hmm. The side dishes get 30%. And then at some point, a side dish could become the steak. That's the transition, right? So if your nine to five is your steak right now, it's requiring 40 hours a week, then you've got to make time to work on that side dish so that you can get yourself in a position that you're ready to transition. And then it's going to take a calendar. It's going to take a plan to do that, right? So now with calendar, this sounds dinosaur, but I mean, I recommend every person, you, you almost have to do it long form before you can do it short form. Every person get a giant, a big, fat, giant one-year calendar, right? Mm. Put it up on the wall or on the floor and do it old-fashioned. First, take care of yourself. How many days do you want to have off each week? Saturday and Sunday? Okay, cool. So you're going to take off 104 days out of the year. Boom, it's gone right there. Take it for yourself. You know, um, if you have complete autonomy over your schedule, give yourself a floating day each month. So that's... 12 of those a year where you just don't feel like working. So you don't work, right? And then take off your vacations, take off your anniversaries and birthdays, right? You remove everything for yourself on the big calendar. And then you figure out how many days you're going to work. And I have found that it doesn't take too many days out of the year for you to quote unquote crush it. You know, a lot of people will tell you crush it, hustle means you know, you got to be working 12 to 16 hours a day, seven days a week. You got to, you got to put in, I'm all about a balance of, a balance of life. And I know this, a lot of times I first start working with somebody and they're working six or seven days a week. My first, my first advice is, would you be willing to work four days a week over the next month? Oh my God, no, everything will fall apart. No, no, what we're going to do is we're going to remove all creative avoidance behavior out of your schedule. Everything that shouldn't be in there in work time is going to be gone. And when you work, you are going to work. When you show up, you're going to show up. And when you're done, you're going to drop the mic. You're going to go home and you're going to rest guilt-free. And the only way you can rest guilt-free is to change your level of focus. And when you work, you have to work. And when you're not working, don't work. Mm, Right? That's good. Yeah. But it starts with that giant calendar. And then that giant calendar needs to come down to, um, and different people call it different things. You know, uh, for me, it's you know, my weekly schedule and you take the time to figure out what does a typical week look like for me. And if you are partially traveling, partially at home, I think it's smart to have a travel schedule and a home schedule. This is the way I live when I'm home. It's the way I live when I travel. And I think it's important for you to involve all the closest people in your life, husbands and wives, figure out, Hey, this is my weekly schedule. Does this work for you? Do we need to negotiate some of this? Here's my morning routine. Does any of that interfere with you? Should I change this or that around? Right? For me, I block out as much as I can block out. Somebody told me one time that blocking out your day, not just your day. You know, if you're a writer, write every Thursday. 
you know? And then even figure out, I'm gonna work for my home office on Monday, I'm gonna work for my church office on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. On Thursday, I'm gonna work in a coffee shop and I'm going to write. You start to look at locations, you start to look at types of work that you wanna do in certain days, and you block as much as possible. You don't do this once a year, you probably do it twice a year because you know your life is changing some. Sure. Um, but, and the, the idea is not to box yourself in where you're living this life where you're like, my God, I gotta do this, the timeline's moving forward, I'm committed. You wanna keep lots of margin in there. But it's the idea that if I were to put you in high school and you're 16 years old and I give you a stack of seven books and I go, over the next seven or eight hours, you need to learn all these topics. There'll be no bell, there'll be no cl classroom to report to, I just need you to get all the work done. The brain likes to follow a block it likes to know that every day from 8.15 to 9, I'm working on biology. You know what I mean? And then from 9 until 9.45, I'm working on social studies or, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's good. And, and when I talk about clarity and then calendar, you want a calendar that truly reflects the direction you're trying to take your life right now. Mm -hmm. and, and that's difficult, isn't it? Because it, it, this is where it becomes real. It's like, don't say you're going to summit Everest next year if you don't have a calendar that reflects your training for Everest. That's so good. I don't want to just keep talking. So, I'll, so I'll it's so good. No, it's so good. Things, right? <laughs> it's always really good. Very clear. You have this great way. I remember when we were, um, in LA, it, we were still like, I think on East coast time. So to us, it's like 8 AM. Right. Time. So I'm walking around like a, that was one heck of a hotel though, wasn't it? Uh, oh, amazing. Yeah. High speed elevator. Unbelievable. Downtown LA. It was great. But I remember waking up and you were like, <laughs> you just set up out of bed and you were strategizing and planning it. And tech, it was like five eleven in the morning. I remember the time it's five eleven in the morning, West coast, eight eleven uh, East coast time. You were, I was like, I needed a soundtrack of like this, like beautiful piano music behind you because it was like beautiful mind stuff. And you were just going, I'm thinking who wakes up like this? Like you sat up in bed and were like, just going and you're like, okay, how about this? And you were, you know, storyboarding, have all these ideas. It's amazing how your brain works. And so I say all that to say just with the, with the clarity, the calendars, the cancellations, it's like, you have a way of seeing things that we can so sometimes in our minds get in the weeds of like, Oh, I have this and that. And you're like, no, 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 it's not that difficult. It's this clear. It's this simple. It's about being intentional. You know, yeah, intentionality yeah. is like a, it's like a real trending term. So it's like you use it and people go, ooh, blah, you know, I'm sick of hearing <laughs> the word, but man, that word, that word has come into the world for such a time as this. Yeah. And, that's so good. And it's about intentionality. It's about who do you want to be? I, everything for me is about intentionality. Now, uh, Brendan Burchard's uh, book, his Burchard's, his latest book, uh, uh, seven habits of high performers one of the things he talks about is um, he calls it the future four. So everything I see that has to do with me being more intentional, I add it into my life and I grab that. And so it's like you wake up each morning, you look at your calendar, you go, okay, I see that I'm going to have a negotiation from two to three. I see that I'm going to be with my family, my wife and, and my kids and grandkids uh, at seven until eight thirty for dinner. I see that I'm gonna have a staff meeting. And then you say to yourself, who do I want to be for my grandkids? Who do I want to be in this negotiation? Like it, it's, it's about, I want to be courageous in the negotiation, but I want to have empathy and focus and passion with my grandkids. And it's just taking the time to figure out who am I going to be today? Where am I going? What am I doing? Is this what I want to be doing? Is this what I should be doing? And that leads to the final step in, I don't know if we were going to try to label this. And by the way, we put this interview together pretty quick. I'm leaving for vacation <laughs> for two weeks in the Outer Banks. Uh, Ooh, nice. Saturday morning. It's now Thursday when we're recording this. So um, uh, my mind is already at the beach. So uh, <laughs> this but I is pretty I good for a beach brain. <laughs> I think this is kind of like, uh, this is like steps to the next level, right? Steps to the next level. Steps, steps to the new version. And step one is clarity. Step two is calendars and, uh, and, and what you're doing with your calendars. And then step three is cancellations. Uh, you have to, you have to, you have to commit to a certain level of cancellations and it comes down to this, you know, I don't know who first said it. I think it's an anonymous statement. I, I think I've kind of attached my name to it cause I've quoted it so many times, but every yes is paid for with a thousand no's. Mm, yeah. I've heard Man, that. And that is the truest thing. I think it's yeah. like this in life. You know, 
I've got the same cell phone number that I had when I was in real estate when I was 25 years old, right? So many people have my phone number right now. It rings all day long. I keep the ringer off, right? The ringer is never on. So if, if I'm not looking at my phone when you call me, I won't know you call. And, um, but most of the time, outside of an emergency situation, and there are different ways people can get in touch with me in emergencies, I live so intentional. Most of my calls are, out, all, are all outbound, right? I, I'm intentional about who I talk with. I'm intentional about what I do each day of my life. And I'm in tune with, oh, no, my mind is crashing. I need to get on the Breathe app and just go through a meditation right now or I need to take some time and pray, read some scripture, you know, listen to some good worship music or something to just, I, I don't want to keep operating like this because mm, I feel like good. I'm about to break down. I got to fix this wow. right now, right? That's huge right there what you're saying. A lot of people just keep going. They keep pushing through. So for you to reset, to recognize it, and then reset is, is crucial. That's great. Absolutely, man. You know, um, and, and, and I think that whether it's my body, it's my mind, um, it's my schedule. I had a client call me one time. Man, I'm, my life is falling apart. You don't understand. I got all this stuff going on. I said, you're right. You got all this stuff going on. Let's look at your schedule. And I said, tell me right now, where is 10 hours that you can delegate to someone else or, or take it out of your schedule right now between now and Friday? This was on a Tuesday so that we can take the pressure off your life. We, we discovered, at first it was like, no, it's all on me. We discovered 10 hours. We created, we created the whole dialogue between him and the people he was going to delegate to. There were a few things he just straight up canceled. He texted me back later. He's like, oh, my God. He's like, I, I've reclaimed my life. I'm, I'm looking forward to now until Friday. I, I, I created the space. And I think we have to be very intentional with what gets into our schedule. And so that's why I talk about cancellations. I've got on my background here, you can see because we're doing this video, but it's going to go audio to your, to your, to your audience. But I, I've, I've got on my whiteboard this system, again, from Brendan Burchard about how to say no. I've got a YouTube video on this as well. I've YouTubed this. But he says what he does, whenever somebody's trying to delegate something to him, give him a task, that he says, start with no, right? Yeah. So, oh, I'm sorry. No, the answer is no. Right. Um, and then you score the task. Right. You score the task. I'm going to stand up here just so I can just share this with you. So you score the task and you ask yourself these questions. What will I gain? What will I gain? That sounds so selfish. But if I'm going to take something on, there needs to be some kind of gain in this. Um, what will I learn something? Will I build a key relationship? And then is this more important, more valuable than other opportunities or tasks that I can accept, right? So you score it. And then when you say no, you delegate to someone, effective delegation, or you cancel the appointment. I'm sorry, I've overcommitted myself and I need to cancel this commitment. And the idea is that you say no until you have created enough margin in your life that you can breathe again. We're not effective when, we're, when we wake up the ground and we wake up each morning and hit the ground running. We have to push back. If we want to really navigate to the next level, the next better version of ourselves, we need clarity. We need the right calendar that really matches the kind of life I want to have. And I control that. And I, I think if you take the time to set the calendar, then all you have to do is follow the calendar. You know, oh, the calendar tells me I'm off all weekend. This is amazing. Sorry, I'm booked. You know what I'm booked doing? I'm booked hanging out. I'm booked reading books, you know, because I know that I have to have enough time in my schedule to get energy or I'm going to have nothing to give out to others. I'm intentional about this, right? Yeah. And then it's about, it's about those cancellations. There's so many things that you said that are like sparking my mind right now. One is we were talking about the hierarchy of needs and I, and I need to research it more. So I apologize. But I think on that level, on that ladder is food, shelter, love, acceptance, community, all that. I think at the top or near it is creativity. I think so many times we are working in our businesses, but not working on our businesses or we're not working on our lives, not being introspective. So we are just kind of like my friend Daniel says, managing the machine. And, uh, 
it just seems like, at least in my life, creativity is going to be the first thing to go. I'm like, I don't got time to be creative because I got to make money and I got to pay these bills and I get this done. And I got to create content, things like that. So I think that's one of the first things that can go in life. And that's a C. So that works too for uh, the talk, the topic. It's a C word, which is perfect. <laughs> and you know, isn't it crazy? We have to become vigilant over our calendar and over our space, mm. over our life, over our phone, over our email, all the different ways that people can get into our lives right now. We have to mm -hmm. become more vigilant than ever before because hundreds of people, tasks and projects and ideas are just thronging their way into our lives. And we have to be conscious of that. We have to mm -hmm. be determined to say, um, because like you said, usually it's the most important stuff that goes first. Yes. You know, the whole get things, what is it David Allen says and get things done and the whole get things done thing that, you know, philosophy that we're all using for time management now. He just says, the idea is not to check off a hundred items off your list. It's to mm. check off the two things that, or the one thing, right? There we yeah. go. We, we get to uh, call back <laughs> yeah. Gary Keller. We get yeah. back to the one thing that mm -hmm. if I get that thing done, everything else is less relevant, and not necessary. The idea is that if I get that one thing done and I reach the next level, then, then I can make hires that can take care of some of this other stuff. You know, with me launching my masterminds, there's a lot of logistical work that's going on right now. And I'm sure. saying, okay, I want to get, what do I need to get done what, on this checklist, on this process that's going to really make it excellent to start with. But right away, I'm turning this over to a virtual assistant. All the manual stuff, most of it's automated, but all the manual stuff is going to be managed by someone else. Mm -hmm. And, but the idea is I just want to get to the next level so that, the next level then makes possible, you know, all those other 10, 20, 30 tasks underneath of this that are just going to get handled when I reach the next level, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we just have to be careful. We don't wake up each day and say yes to all the stuff that's not going to move our life forward. So good. The end. The end. So good, man. We could talk for two more hours. But with that, um, I would just love to final thought, final closing thought, something you'd love to share with our listeners. It's been great so far. Oh, final thought. I mean, final thought is this. I know I'm going to sound like a, like a maniac, a crazy person right now. Maybe it's because I'm 47 getting ready to be 48. I'm still young. Super but man, young. I feel like I have been like my gray beard. Wisdom is finally starting to come to me. And I feel like mm. I've been dumb all my life. And I'm finally starting to go, oh my gosh, I get it. I get it. And I would just say this, that anyone, I mean, maybe there are some exceptions. Anyone can navigate their life in any direction, in any dream. I remember when I started out with nothing and I drove by this house in this nice neighborhood that was now it's just a decent neighborhood. But back then it was like way beyond reach. And we stood in front of a house and we, we did like this little radical prayer. We're like, God, give us that house one day, right? I don't know if you've ever done mm -hmm. stuff like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and now I look at my future and with all that's on the table right now, that just five years ago I would have never imagined the way I'm scaling my life. I'm within reach of any kind of life I want to have, you know? And you, you just have to believe that you want to make each year clever. Each year intentional. You don't want to waste a year. You don't, you don't want to waste a month. You don't even want to waste a year. I mean, a, a week. That's why I think there's a power in coaching and masterminds because you think to yourself, what if I could be intentional 52 weeks out of the year? Where would I be one year from now? Because it's the shenanigans of everything taking over my life for a week, two weeks, a month, two months, three months. I've made no progress. Right. And so I would just I would just give hope to everyone today that if you could follow these steps and get new clarity and create a better calendar and get really good at making some cancellations. And I don't want to sound like a, an elitist that only has time for the biggest things in life. I think we always have to know what we're getting paid for and what we're contributing back to mankind and what we're getting paid for. We need to provide 10 times value so that we're an asset, not a liability for others. And then, what we're, and then we just have to make room in our lives to do things that we don't get rewarded for, we don't get praised for. You know, um, so this is not just about me living my best life. It's about me being in a position that I can contribute 
in an even a greater way, not, not lesser, but in a greater way. But I want to control the terms of how I'm presenting myself to this world. And it starts with me taking very good care of myself so that I actually have something to give away to the world around me. Love it. Well said. One more time, would you share away anything you want to promote that we can drive our listeners to? Man, just one thing, these masterminds. Uh, they'd be ideal for somebody probably at six figures trying to go to, you know, 500000 a year or, you know, 500000 a year trying to go to a million a year. And now I've got clients all the way up. My, my biggest client now is at a $150 million company. In five years, he wants to be at a half billion dollar company doing amazing things. Uh, we have, you know, professional million, you know, million dollar companies that are in, in masterminding and podcasting, uh, brick and mortars, uh, people who are just scaling out of brick and mortars and, and doing more ad spend, getting into the world of marketing. Uh, so realtors, you name it. Um, but if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, if you're a CEO and you want to be in a, in a circle where you can get into a, you could be part of a super brain, then jump in. And they can do that at chuckbalsamo.com forward slash masterminds. You just fill out the application and I'll get in touch with you. Perfect. Well, Chuck, this has been so great as usual. Thank you so much for your time today. Matt, I'll tell you what, I'm so impressed with you. And, you know, you, the quality of people you're bringing on your show right now is unbelievable. You have Thanks. really become quite the podcaster. And, you know, <laughs> everything you said about me, I would say back to you, that trip to California was a great time. You are a world-class guy, and uh, I, I'm just a better person for spending that time with you in L.A. So well, I appreciate that, sir. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Entre Nito. We'd like to invite you to visit us on the web at entrenito.com and hear some of the neato things you can expect when you get there. As a token of our appreciation for tuning in, you can download a free audiobook. And that's thanks to our friends at Audible. You can purchase your very own super official, super comfy, and super trendy Neato t-shirt. Looking to take your life and business to the next level? You can sign up for a free coaching call. Have a question or comment for us? You can click contact and connect with us. All of this and more is waiting for you at entrenito.com. Finally, don't forget to subscribe to our show and stay current on all the amazing interviews with our Neato guests. Now take what you've learned and apply it and start living your Neato life now.